Okay. I think we'll go ahead and get started. We have quite a few people online. Really wonderful people here. Thanks for making the trek. Um, so just a reminder that when you enter the webinar, um, make sure your mic's muted so that we don't hear you here. Um, this meeting is being recorded. Now we're being recorded. So there's that. Okay. Um, thanks all for coming. So this will just be, we haven't had one of these in a while. Um, life got crazy. I keep thinking it won't be crazy, but it just stays crazy. Um, so today's just kind of more of an informative meeting. Lots of things that while we've been doing our work here at the office, what I think you should be aware of. Um, so, and if you have any questions, let me know. Um, if we have time at the end, then we can bring up any concerns that you guys have. Um, but hopefully this will be valuable information. So we're just going to go through some updates, some upcoming events, some progress that we've made in the work of early childhood here in the state, um, what we can expect for the 2020 session at the legislature, um, how you guys can stay informed. Um, we'll talk about early at you a little bit. I don't know if you guys are um, familiar with that, but um, we'll have Casey Hutton from the Department of Workforce Services coming to help guide us in that conversation a little bit. Um, talk about some professional development opportunities. Then I need some help from you guys for a little bit on some um, Google Sheets. And then we'll talk about our future meetings. So, um, first update is, you guys should be aware of the PEEP standard setting. I've been sending out those emails. Um, I have a good group, but I still wouldn't mind like one or two more directors or, and one or two more teachers. Um, the group we have right now is great, but if someone gets sick <laughs> or doesn't show up on the day of, I'm a little worried um, that it will be too small. So, if you can, you know, volunteer teacher or um, yourself or a coach, someone that's um, familiar with the PEEP, and has a lot of great preschool experience. We really value them coming. So it's on November 12th at the state capitol. Um, let me get the times real quick. And I can send them the event if they're willing to So it's from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. on November 12th. Um, so if you or you have a teacher that would be willing to participate in that, just send me an email. Um, that would be awesome. So if you listened to Teresa's um, last preschool roundtable meeting. I gave a couple updates at the end of that. We talked about last time that the TSSA funding was having an amendment um, to be used for preschool funding. Um, it actually was always intended to be used for preschool funding, but that intent didn't get put into board rule. And so they made an amendment to board rule that it can now be used for preschool funding. That passed full board, which is awesome and super exciting. Um, as I mentioned during Teresa's meeting, um, it's likely that your district has already allocated those funds for this school year, but it would not hurt to start those conversations now for the next year, um, that those can be used for preschool programs. <laughs> Sorry, if Siri is not quite sure she understands. <laughs> so, <laughs> taking that up, so, okay. so anyway, so that's super exciting. Um, another source of funding is always great. So our standards, so on November 7th, um, we'll have, yeah. Is that designated for particular populations or is it any funding? I haven't like become really familiar with the rule. Um, it's located in um, Civic Clerk, which I'll show you how to access later in the meeting. Um, so you can pull up that rule and see all the things that it um, can be used for. Uh, but one of them was like early learning, but they had specifically called out like except for preschool. And then the, um, the person that ran the bill, what's that called? Anyway, sponsor. Yeah, thank you. The sponsor of the bill was like, no, no, that was not the intent. Um, and so they've made the, the change to the to the board rule now that it works with the legislation. So, um, yeah, so you'll just have to talk with your district representatives on how they're currently using the funding and if there's any wiggle room there. Um, but it's just great to know that that's another pocket that you can pull from. You might want to check your budgets, too. Uh -huh. We actually found... I guess there was something in the rule written into that 20, up to 25% could be used for contract teacher salaries. Our district allotted that to all contract staff. All of a sudden, we had a budget line item show up that we had never seen before. So we ended up getting a little bit, but we didn't even know that it was in there. So okay. if your district did any sort of a allowance for how much they allow for contract teachers, you may have some in there. Separate okay. from the plans. That Separate were from, yeah, the plans that the usually principal. the principals had yeah. to write. So, so there's maybe something that they can't apply this year. Yeah. So just. I'm doing quite shocked. Yes, that's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, 
bring that to their attention for sure. Okay, so standards um, on November 7th will be our board meeting. Um, they both pass subcommittees, so there'll be two action items up for the board. The first will be the release of the draft standards for public comment. Because this has already gone to subcommittee, I've actually put the draft is public because of that. And so I already put it in the Google file. So you can pull up the new um, early learning standards and distribute them to your staff already. Um, and then we, we will be setting up three locations um, for, uh, oh my goodness, for standard review, for public review, where people can come and um, meet. And we'll also have an online survey where they can put in their feedback then. I would really encourage you to encourage like all of your staff um, to see and look through it. Um, maybe emphasize to them like divide it up just so like that there's lots of eyes over the entire document. Um, we've been working on it for quite a while, but we've mentioned too that it's quite a heavier lift than typical standard review because we're doing all content areas and two age levels. So we probably missed something. <laughs> so please, please, please have lots of eyes on it. Um, with the locations, we're wanting to do like a north, a central, and a south. Um, Jamie had the marvelous idea that since we're trying to work on the perception of preschool and what preschool is, that if we can have those in locations where there's also a classroom where people could walk through and see what preschool is all about, I mean, really, rather than have it just be this obscure topic, it might be a really great opportunity to um, invite our um legislators and people in the community so that they can kind of start getting the perception of preschool. We kind of have the two of like, they need to stay home with mom. And then like, if they're on board with preschool, they're a little worried about like, are they in desks and stuff? Like they don't understand the play aspect, but it's a great place to be. We have loads of fun, but then there's ways of um, doing learning and teaching that's developmentally appropriate for the children. So if you have a classroom somewhere they, where you think we're thinking 40 to 50 people, and we, we haven't done one of these before, but that's about how many people usually show up. So a kind of a bigger space where we could hold the group and review the standards, but also where a classroom is nearby so that they could come and see that. So if you have something like that, if you'll just send um, Jamie or I an email about that potential location, um, that would be awesome so that we can have a list where we can start picking um, where those are going to go. When we go to full board November 7th, they're going to ask me those locations. And so, <laughs> the so sooner, please do that. The yeah. <laughs> By the end of the day, would be amazing. Approximately, approximately when would the visits be taking place? So it'll be between anywhere. So if it passes November seventh, we do a ninety-day public review. Okay. And so anytime in that realm the next would 90 be days. fantastic. And then they usually are held evening hours, so five to seven, six to eight. Those. So After just be aware of those. Can come. Yes. And oh, parents so. are welcome to come. So to see classrooms, they wouldn't see kids? No. Yeah. Okay. So but we could, if we had a space. Yeah. Just where a classroom's nearby, they could go in, okay. into a room. But and it wouldn't be during. Not, not children. Right. Oh, children children wouldn't be present. So, yeah. and then I'm required to have a minimum of three. They could require me to do more. So if there are any of you that are willing to let us come to your location, yeah. please let me Give know. Give us a good <laughs> list, and then we'll work from that. Um. We're getting some feedback. So if you join the webinar, please mute your mic. Can you scroll up here and see the audience? It might have muted now. Okay. So can I ask yeah. who would be coming to the meetings like this? So it can be anyone. It can be all your teachers. It can be your all the like the parents. Anyone can come. Anyone in the public that is open. Oh, yep. So we have to make sure that it's notified. So we'll be once we have the locations, we'll be notifying all of you and and expecting you to notify your teachers, and then they would notify the parents. Like we just spread the news. It'll be posted on you. And um, yeah, so we'll just keep going back. Is anybody? Okay. <clears throat> I'll keep talking, and hopefully it'll. I know. That would be good to test this one too. Maybe Jeb or Alex and see. Okay. Um, second action item that will be going on to the board on November 7th is um, that the preschool standards will now be included in all the regular content standards, which is awesome. Which um, awesome for the field in the sense of like standards will always be aligned, that when we have to do standard revisions, we're not doing all content areas for two grade levels. Um, 
it'll be really great that way as well as I see it in the bigger picture of like preschools finally being included that like we now have social studies standards for pre -K, for pre-k through 12 we now have math standards for pre-k through 12 like we're part of the conversation so that's going to the full board on November 7th I don't anticipate any um problems with that but um so we'll watch and see what the conversation is there um that's super exciting um, so something just for your information is we have a preschool infographic now. Um, Jennifer Thronson is our new um, I'm gonna close that is our new uh, teaching and learning uh, director. She was our coordinator before, um, and she asked that we all create um, an infographic to help you know the, with the conversation of. Um, just something easy for the curriculum directors to look at that helps give them like a good baseline level. So they asked that we would do one for preschool. So this is our infographic. It's also in the Google folder. Um, so we just have like a really um, like int introduction paragraph just talking about all great things of preschool. And then we kind of picked six things that we felt were important and have little paragraphs there. Um, I'll let you review it. And then down here at the bottom in the yellow, we have a little um, thing about the school readiness grants, since that's a big initiative that, and the real funding source right now that we currently have in the state. This would also be something great to give to, you know, anyone that you need, um, like on your district level that you're trying to help get them informed about preschool or your legislators, again, representative. Um, it has the Utah State Board seal on it, so it's official. So anyway, it's and if you have any feedback on this, it's still, um, we can easily change it. Um, it really was Jamie and I working on it with some other documents that we previously had. But if you have any feedback, please let us know and we'll make any changes to it. But it's just a great resource for you to have. Um, the last update I had was the CDA um, content info, con contact information. So this document is in your Google file as well. Um, we've been talking about CDA scholarships that we need. Obviously, there's a because of high turnover, because of the grant requirements, um, we're always trying to get our staff to have that CDA require that requirement or um, just the certification to be um, highly qualified teachers in our classrooms. Um, the scholarship that was previously available through HQSRE is no longer available since the legislation ended. However, uh, they said that in talking with uh, Care About Child Care, they said there are some times where their classes are not full and um, they could possibly allow you to come to a spot for free or um, sometimes you would have to pay anyway. So she said that these are the contacts um, based on your geographical area who you can contact if you are looking for a CDA um, opportunity for one member of your staff. Uh, just know in this, we'll, we'll kind of continue this in our early ed you conversation, but we're very well aware that we need to um, find an easier way for our staff to get those CDA scholarships and a funding source would be great. So we're continually talking about that and working through um, some solutions. But for now, this is just a good, uh, good contact list. So just know that that's available to you as well. Jessica, can I ask one quick question? Yeah. Um, back on the standards, so you would ask for people that would be willing to be on kind of a what you call it a leadership oh yes uh -huh. is that feeding do i need to let people know a date is what i like is there anything that you're not on november 7th that'll that'll be after the 90 day review is really um we so might want yeah in february yeah perfect thank you it'll probably be the first thursday in february thanks yeah okay so uh, some upcoming <laughs> events so we have the Kindergarten Transition Summit coming. Um, it's going to be December 17th and 18th. We've had these in the past. Um, I don't know if there was one last year. If there was. I wasn't aware of it. <laughs> um, but it's a great opportunity. We're really just talking about how we can make sure that those transitions for our preschoolers are as smooth as possible. So we're inviting um, preschool staff, teachers, directors, as well as on the elementary side, elementary principals, teachers, kindergarten teachers, um, anyone that's involved. So um, please let your staff know that this is happening as well as whatever your elementary contacts are so that we can get this to the elementary um, kindergarten teachers in your district would be great information as well. Um, I know they're trying to spread it through other avenues, but if you guys can help in that, that would be great. Um, there is the save the date uh, document in the Google folder 
for that, and I'll show a little bit of that in a bit. Um, we're going to be having the state preschool workshop in January. We're going to do three locations this year um, in Brigham City, in Sandy, and in St. George. I also have the save the date for that attached. I'll be sending out one with um, more information shortly with like registration information. Um, I'm just working out a couple kinks la um, last bit before I can do that. Uh, at the central one, which is the Sandy one, we have a, a national presenter coming. We have, uh, her name's Lorena from Mansilla from um, WIDA. She's the early, uh, early learners. So it is early learners coordinator. Um, she's awesome. We go to a SCAS conference three times a year where we meet with other state preschool uh, specialists. And she's presented, to, she's in that group and she's presented to us a couple of times about like just equity and um, English learners, dual language learners. She's awesome. She's adorable. So if you can make it to the central one, you'll see her, um, but we'll have some great options as well for the north and south locations too. Um, to be determined. If there is going to be a fee, it'll probably be around like $10 to cover lunch um, because we don't want, it's hard to have people leave and come back. We lose that precious time we have. Um, but with USBE funds, we can't buy food. So I would need the cost to come from them. Um, I'm currently working with vendors to see if they'll be willing to donate the food. Um, so that's one of my hiccups that I'm still working through. So possibly, but if it is, it'll only be like $10. But keep those dates in mind. If you can like, encourage your staff to come if you can offer you know like as a professional day for them that you could offer them pay for attending awesome um just keep those in mind more information to follow um day on the hill so we are working with uh, head start and the office of child care to do a day on the hill during legislative session where we would um pretty much just have an opportunity for legislators to learn about preschool um, we'll like bring materials up and have some kids there playing. Uh, it's in the very beginning stages of being planned now. Um, when I have more on that, I will let you know, but I wanted to give you the date so that you can prepare for that. Um, but yeah, it's a great, it'll be a great opportunity. And then we're also really close to releasing exit um, dates for the exit training. We're going to try to do the end of March early April before um, we want it to be close to when you're going to be administering the PEEP um, so that your teachers are, are testing to fidelity, but we also don't want to do it too late that we're past your testing window. So um, again, grantees for the Becoming Quality Grant and the Expanded Student Access Grants are the only ones that are required to administer the assessment, but anyone is welcome to um, attend the training and give the assessment. The assessment's public. Um, and we're hoping in coming years that we'll be able to open the data system so that we can allow all data to be submitted and then do comparison between all different programs regardless of their participating in the grant. Um, I just wanted to let you know of that. So those are coming too. And I don't know if, if other programs are in the same boat we are, but we trained a core group of staff mm -hmm. and then they went and trained the rest of our staff. So if we can have enough time between when that you could have a your training day. comes and the window opens mm -hmm. that we have enough time to train the rest of our staff. Okay. Yeah. So if you're, if you're a grantee, it wouldn't be a bad idea to just send me when you're ending and what your testing windows are. So we can keep that in mind while we plan the dates. So mm -hmm. that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I have some questions. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Tara wants to know, um, do you want spring dates for the districts for planning? Tara, we have a calendar that we can look at, so we yeah. should know when your spring dates are. So I just wanted to let you know that. And then Leanne is asking, will there be a Southern Utah training for the PEEP exit? Yes. Can there will be. Participate remotely due to budget and travel issues. Yeah. We're, again, we'll do the same as we did for PEEP entry. We did um, one in Davis, I think, and we did one here in Salt Lake, and then we did one in um, St. George. So we're still planning on doing a North, a Central, and a South training for those, and a webinar which will be recorded for later viewing as well. Okay, awesome. Next slide. Okay, so those are the save the dates. So the preschool workshop is on the left and the save the date for the kindergarten transition summit is on the right. Those are both in the Google file as well as this PowerPoint. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be great. So we've made some progress since we've last met. 
Um, first of all, the US, USBE has put early learning in part of their strategic plan, which again is awesome and something that you can share with others that this is important and people are starting to pay attention. Um, so you can see that we have four um, goals. There's goals for early learning that each student starts strong through early grades and with a foundation in literacy and numeracy. Personalized teaching and learning that each student and educator has access to personalized teaching and learning experiences. Safe and healthy schools that each student learns in a safe and healthy school environment. And effective educators and leaders that each student is taught by effective educators who are supported by effective school leaders. So with each of those um, goals, they are listed with some strategies. So you can see the strategies for the early learning and the third one down, 1C is increase optional access to high quality preschool. So that flat out is saying we're trying to improve and um, increase the amount of seats for preschool, um, as well as family engagement is in there, uh, high quality instruction and optional access to high quality extended day kindergarten programs as well. So, um, I think in the notes of this slide, I put um, the um, the website where you can see more of this, but it's really easy if you just go to the board site, there's like this goals picture is there. And if you click on that, it'll take you there too. Um, also, we talked last time about, um, well, I think we, we talked about that the Early Childhood Commission had, had passed. So it's the Governor's Early Childhood Commission and a bunch of leaders from over um, all of the organizations are there. So we have the head of uh, the Department of Workforce Services, um, Sid Dixon, our superintendent, is attending, as well as I think like the Department of Health and other organizations. Um, it's really great because we're trying to um, coordinate the work of early childhood in the state. There's lots of people all over the state doing great things, um, but we're overlapping and where we could really, if we are organized in our efforts, we can accomplish a lot more. So that's the work of this commission. They've met once. Um, the first meeting was really more of a just like an instruction meeting for them of this is how an, a body functions. Um, but you can listen to those recordings, which I'll show you in a second how you can do that, um, as well as attend those meetings. Uh, there is also an Early Childhood at, um, Utah Advisory Council that is a larger group, which we'll talk about in a, a, in a little bit as well, um, that advises this council. And you can have some input in that group as well. So talking um, forward, for the 2020 legislative session, there's gonna be no change regarding the actual code for the grants. Um, so becoming quality grant, will, the, the, uh, the code language will stay the same as well as the expanded student access. Um, in our previous meetings, I refer to them as SB 166, which is the legislative, the um, bill number. But after legislative session, like we'll have another SB 166 this year and it will be different. So we really need to refer to the code language. So I've linked the code here if you wanna look at that. Um, so if you open this PowerPoint, just click on those um, links, it'll take you right to the code for that. Um, the thing we will be asking for is more money. <laughs> so uh, the legislate from, for SB 166, it combined a pot of money. And part of that money was 3 million that was originally for the H HQSR grants. Um, that had been previously set aside as ongoing funding. Um, at the end of legislative session this last um, year, they were trying to work through tax reform. And so they went through a bunch of bills and changed ongoing funding to one-time funding. So they took that $3 million and turned it to one time. So if we did nothing, we would be down to $6 million. Um, and we're already hurting with the nine. So that absolutely needs to be... Um, turn back to ongoing. So DWS is kind of taking the lead on that one. Um, they're going to be working and um, having the conversations, but it would not hurt to tell your representatives that this is happening and that needs to occur. Um, as well as all of the grantees know, as well as those that um, applied, we did not have enough money this time around for um, preschool grants. The um, Yeah, we had quite a few more applicants than we anticipated. Um, as, which is just, it's hard because we, the field is growing faster than we can prove the work is working. So it's hard to ask for a lot when we don't have great data yet. So we are asking for more because we have the data of the field's need. Um, so we're going to be asking for an additional 3 million. That additional 3 million will be going through USBE <coughs> in a business case. It's already working its way through. Um, so on November 20th, it'll be going um, just, Kind of an informative meeting to the education interim committee 
it'll be um, put forth before them, letting them know why we're asking for it. Jennifer will be presenting. It was supposed to be this last bit, um, their last meeting in the month of October, but it was at the end of the meeting and got pushed, which is great because now I can notify all of you. Um, you can listen to those meetings online as well. Um, so we'll um, be able to hear what the education committee, um, their thoughts on it. And they'll probably give us guidance on how to proceed and what data they would like moving forward. So that's our session coming up. Okay, staying informed. So um, there's so much going on here at the state office that I wish I would have known about so that I could have had a voice um, when I was a teacher. Um, I wasn't aware that we were like still needing boots on the ground in this space. I thought like things were working well. So I think it's just really good for everyone to be informed. So I put the Utah State Board of Education website on there. If you do slash board, um, I was gonna show you, you can see, um, and I'll go through it in a second, board members, when board meetings are, as well as um, other information to connect to Civic Clerk. Civic Clerk is the um, program that we use for all of the board documents. So the agendas will be there. Anything that's going up before the board will be listed there. Um, and I'll, I will go through it here in just a little bit, um, as well as the YouTube channel. So they have to um, broadcast the meetings live. And so um, you can mark those dates on your calendar and then just pull up the YouTube channel and pay attention. Um, Sometimes it's thoroughly entertaining. Uh, sometimes it's trying to put you to sleep, but you never know when preschool is going to be brought up. I've learned that, um, that I always need to be ready and um, for them to bring it up in the conversation. So um, some of you might be familiar, some of you might not. So I'm just going to kind of get the basics. So we have two meetings, two days each month scheduled for board meetings. One of those days is standing committees and one day is full board. So full board actually happens first on the Thursday right now. They might switch it. They tend to change it up once in a while. But right now, the Thursday is usually the full board meeting, which means they're reviewing everything that happened in standing committees from the month prior. So that's why we went to standing committee for um, standards of assessment last month for the standards. And now it will be going to full board on Thursday the 7th. The following day, the Friday, is standing committee. So that's everything has to go to committee before it goes to full board. Um, so, again, those are all on YouTube on those days, so you can pull up and pick which committee you want to um, look at. We'll try to be great at, like, if there's something that pertains that we'll let you know so you can just tune in for that little bit of it. Um, so just, yeah, be aware of, you can watch them on YouTube or you can look into Civic Clerk. So I'm just going to pull up real fast so we can look at this. Please also know that the agenda is, like, there is an agenda there. But it's not set in stone. <laughs> Especially the time and the schedule of them. So it's usually the sequence is usually the same. So sometimes when you log in, you can actually hear what they're talking about and go, they're an hour behind. Like <laughs> we'll come back in a little yeah. bit, you know. So yeah. So this is just the board website. So again, you can hit board members here and learn who your board member is, um, what district you're in, um, and their contact information. They all have like a little blurb on them and how long they've been in. Um, so you can do that. So that's a great thing to contact, to let people know about. Um, board meetings are listed here. So we have the 2020 meeting scheduled, excuse me. So you can go in and you can put those in your calendar now, um, just so that you're aware of when they're happening. Um, so civic clerk, is the document, is the program that we use. So if you click this link, the link is really easy to remember too. It's just usbe.civicclerk.com. So it'll bring it up here. So you have uh, current and upcoming events in this top portion. And you can see that they'll have standing committees and then they'll have the actual board meeting. So you can pick which one you need. So down here, if we go to October, we went to um, standing committee, <coughs> the standards. So that one, to, there's um, finance committee, Law and Licensing Committee, Standards and Assessment Committee, and I think that's it. Yeah, we only have the three. So, um, like recently, the uh, the TSSA went to, um, previously in September, went to um, Law and Licensing, and then uh, we went to Standards and Assessment. So if you scroll down here, you can see action items. So there's the agenda memo that we submit as well as the document um, for the standards. So we have two action items here, the one of the draft. So here's the draft document of the standards. 
Um, it'll look a lot prettier when it's actually released right now. We don't want to put all the pretty work in when we're going to change it. So it's just a Word doc right now. Um, and then you can see to release it for public comment. Mm -hmm. And when you had talked about your leadership committees, um, think about that when you're going through the standards, think about professionals that you already have that are working in that area, because mm -hmm. I would definitely love to chat with them before that February meeting. Yeah. So if you want to get me names and stuff, anybody that wants to be on that leadership committee, I would love to start meeting with them. And then I'm not sure if we put the summary implementation in our PowerPoint, but we should probably let them know about that too. The summer the implementation institute? Yeah. With uh, Jennifer? Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, Yes, yeah, so we're having some summer. I'll, I'll send those out. So there, um, I think I mentioned this too in Teresa's Hello. Um, <laughs> but uh, previously, they've kind of run Core Academy for um, pro, for districts, and that went away. And so we're kind of implementing something similar. It's going to be called Implementation Institutes. We have the dates for the summer. Um, I'll release those in a preschool in an email. Um, I'll write it down so I don't forget. Yeah. So um, just some great leaders for that, too, that would be um, that you feel like have had PD experience that would be um, able to come and then kind of carry the work on. Um, so we'll be present at some of the implementation institutes, but then we would like some high quality staff that would be able to go and, you know, continue the work and follow up to ensure that whatever we're teaching at those implementation to institutes actually gets implemented. Um, back to the committees real fast. So yes, USB standing committees, you can go into and see the schedule and click on the documents. Same thing kind of applies for the actual board meeting. So you just go in and see the agenda and then um, general consent calendar. So those are items that they feel, you know, can um, go through pretty quickly. Um, so, it's, uh, but every once in a while things get brought up on that. And then you can see when they start to review stuff from the subcommittees. Um, this was the legislation. Just scroll past it. Where is it? Like this big long list. Okay, this big long list is the um, legislation that's going forward. They instead of like putting things as a priority for the board, saying like we have prioritize <laughs> funding, they just sent everything. So it's kind of interesting this year. Um, anyway, so then you can go through and find, you know, standards assessment committee and then go back and, and um, see what happened there. I was just looking this morning because usually in the old system, we would have a place where you could go rather than watch the video, you could see like what happened and what the results were and how the board voted. I couldn't find that this morning. So I'll keep looking for that and figure out where it is um, and then let you know. It's probably right. I think it would be in that minutes thing probably. I'll talk with her and figure out what that is. Anyway, so that's Civic Clerk. You don't need to log in to log in. You just do usbe.civicclerk.com and you can access those things. Um, so the next thing is the public notice site. So it looks like this. And I was just there. So you can see that. So this is where you can go for all of the public bodies to get on their like email list. So you always know when there there's a meeting and what the what's on the agenda, which is super awesome. So um, you'll go to this site and there's the three columns, the government, entity, and body. And so if you go to the website here, we'll just do the education commission um, that just went forth. So I think you're all going to be interested in that. You would pick state. And it's not wanting to work right now. Let's see if I can refresh it. And then it would bring up a list. And so we want um, the governor's office. And then you would do governor's early childhood commission. And then you can hit subscribe to this body. Later, if you come back and look, they'll have like the audio recording here. So if you want to listen to that original meeting, you can do that, as well as um, other documents that they submitted. So in the slides, again, I put them in the Google folder so you can access this later. But I've put notes here. 
I put the notes here. Um, sorry. I can handle PowerPoint, I promise. Just have to think. Okay, in my notes, real quick, you can see that I've put what the organization is and then like kind of the code to get there. So the government entity is the state, the entity government is the state, entity would be Department of Workforce Services, and then the school readiness board. So that's kind of the these again are in the Google Slides, Google Holders, you can go in later and then kind of click on which ones you want to um, subscribe to. So um, I'm just going to review these real quick, which things you would probably want to pay attention to. So first of all, I've put the school readiness board. So that's the board that oversees the high quality and becoming quality pre preschool grants. Um, so that's one that you'll want to pay attention to because that's where they make decisions on who's granted funds. Um, we're discussing the observation tool right now. Uh, anything that applies to the grants gets discussed in that meeting. So if you're a grantee, that's probably your number one priority to listen to. Um, the second one is the education interim committee. Again, I mentioned that one. So that's those from the legislator that are on the education interim committee. The next meeting for that one is November 20th. Um, and that's where we'll be talking about our request for the 3 million. The Early Child Commission is the one that was approved through the legislator, legislature last year. Um, as the government, the lieutenant governor runs that body with the leaders of the organizations that are working in early childhood. And then we have the Early Childhood Utah Advisory Council or ACU Advisory Council, um, which is the bigger body that advises the Early Childhood Commission. Both Jamie and I are voting members on that, on that um, council. Um, and then there's subcommittees which are on the next slide, but the field, as in you guys or teachers, can participate in those subcommittees if you're interested. Um, on the next slide, I'll show you um, what those are. And then you can email Nicole or Carrie Martinez. Um, both of their emails are just their name at utah.gov. I've also put their emails below in the notes of this slide. Um, so you can email them once you've seen those subcommittees if you'd like to participate. And then um, the OCC Advisory Council. So that's the Office of Child Care. Um, we take turns sitting on that body, depending on who's available. Um, that one, I would just say pay attention to, cause we're, we're, we're talking every once in a while. I'm just learning myself as a teacher. I really had the perception of we're really like separate from childcare and, um, we do different things, which I think are true, but they're all our kids. They're all coming to kindergarten we as preschools can't take care of them full day, but we care about what's happening with our kids, as well as, you know, we have our kids for three hours a day. And if we really want to make gains on them, then we really need to, you know, strengthen that communication and start working with them. So I'm working on trying to improve in that area. Um, so just keep that in mind as well, if you want to participate in that one. So these are the subcommittees for the Early Childhood Utah Advisory Council. Um, so there's the data and research one. I'm on that one where, um, working on really just kind of getting the preschool data and publishing it for others to see. And there's the early, early care and education where we've been talking about like the workforce um, compensation, as well as like some clarity. We've been following power to the profession um, on the NACI site, which kind of um, has something similar to, I guess, the nursing field in that there um, are categories of early childhood professionals and um, seeing if we can, align our work so that there's clarity to the field, to everyone outside the field of, you know, this is what their job is and, and the respect and compensation that they need. Um, parent engagement and support in education, uh, promoting help and access to medical, um, to medical homes. Um, that one, it, I don't know what she really does on that one. I don't. I like the first time I read that title. I was like, "What?" A lot of it is a lot of it includes oh, yeah, the so dental like your screenings. Yeah, that's what it was. Your health screenings, health screenings, your eyes, your ears, your dental. Teeth. Like, let's do yeah. that. That's I work true. on the early care and education. Which one is Teresa on? Teresa's on the social, emotional, and mental health one. So that one's kind of just getting getting going. Um, so again, we kind of need some members on those. So if these are the actual leaders or the chair of those subcommittees. So you can feel free to contact them. Um, Again, reminder to mute your mic. <laughs> we can hear it's going on. Um, yes, yeah, so feel free to contact them. This slide is not in the PowerPoint. I added it last minute, but I'll update it in the Google site as well. 
Okay. So we're going to have some conversations. The first one is with the early and you, but I'm going to wait till Casey gets here. I told her to come at 10 at 11. Sorry. Um, so we'll move to the second slide real fast. And Jamie can talk about PD. I'm going to switch laptops with you for a second. Yes. I just asked Lorraine if she would mute. All right. Because <laughs> I think it's her. All right. So with professional development, we are looking at coming up with this year's professional development. Last year, we, we understand it was later in the year when we were able to put out that information. We would like that those cohorts is the way that we ran them last year. And I was, I asked Katie if she would talk a little bit about those because the way that we kind of, and the emails that had gone out had talked about how we would like it to be a coordinator and some teachers or, and, or, or a coach or somebody that could come to those to make sure that the implementation is actually happening in the classroom. Um, through the language and literacy one, we also hired the presenter to be a coach. So she's gone out into the settings to be coming to give them feedback on their information. And so we, I would just like Katie to talk about her experience really quick and then I'll tell you more. Okay. So uh, we're from Murray. We participated in the Kaplan cohort. Um, we were able to get, I, I selected a teacher from each of my classrooms. Last year I had three classrooms going. Um, so I took one teacher from each classroom plus myself to go attend and start getting started in the Kaplan. Um, we did, there was a couple of great training days that were provided in the beginning. And then in little bits, we implemented some of the stuff that Kathy, the um, trainer, uh, shared with us. And we broke for the summer. Um, before we broke, she did come to an observation on site, and then she met and did some reflection with each of the teachers. But additionally, she met or observed the other people that weren't participating in the actual cohort. Um, so she basically made herself known across um, all of our classrooms and just started to build that relationship with all of the teachers, not just those that we would meet with in the, in the group. Um, and then we broke for the summer and then we just reconvened and kind of did a refresher. And then she came out again this time um, for an observation prior to our full day training. And so it was able, we were able to reflect on that after the, after the observation period, but she did some great um, presenting both in her cohorts with us as participants, as well as at, on our site. Um, in our classrooms. And so I just think that that's been a great experience. Also being able to see face-to-face -face some of the other teams that are participating and start building that relationship with them. We've got a Google Drive that we're trying to start to utilize and add documents as a group and also just to be able to connect and kind of build from this little training and kind of continue it on going forward. So it's been really good and really nice for our people that are participating, but also the staff when she's come into our site to see and talk to us. And um, it's been really useful. Some of our staff is well-trained. And so it's a good reminder to go back to what they originally started doing. And then also it's been great for our new staff that are new to the site and are learning um, how to teach and, and what to do. So it's been really good overall. Well worth it. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. So that was kind of like the model we had it them a training day and let's give them time to implement right and then come back and give them more information we study after study says if you have a chance to implement what you've been taught get the retention is so much better for the field and so the having the knowledge us having that knowledge that's what we want to do with professional development and that's kind of what we started we know that it was crazy last year we understand that this year we're trying to start that earlier we're trying to get that implemented between January and May. So that training will happen between that time. We understand that Fridays are valuable for all of you. However, trying to come up with training dates with coordinators and everybody else is very difficult as well. So what we are trying to do to help, because we've taken this first, first cohort and said what works and what doesn't work. And travel has been, even though we've tried to do it remotely, we've tried to do whatever we can to get more participants in there. Travel has been a problem. And so what we're proposing this year is that we do one in the north, one in the central, and one in the south. But that way we can, we're hoping to reach more educators and more programs that can then go in and implement that. It may mean that we have less training days, less coaching days, but we've talked about, I have that tiny URL, which is like kind of a survey as to what you guys would like for this next year. Jessica has also been running the letters program and we've had Lucy Polson come in. She's the writer of the early childhood letters. She's been fantastic. Mm -hmm. 
She has been wonderful, right? And so for those of you that have been able to do that too, we have that program, but it also allows you to do the online training. So you get the online training in the letters. Last At our last meeting we had up at the Capitol, she talked about she has a training for trainers. And so what we're maybe looking at this year is having some people come from each area. And we haven't decided, it depends on the cost, right? How much we can actually... Stuff to get a quote. <laughs> we still have to get a quote. We still have to do all of that stuff. But kind of what we're looking at is using some of the money to have people come in and be trained on that that can then go back and train other people in their areas. Seems like a faster way to spread the wealth of knowledge than having, you know, our little bits with Lucy always coming. If we can train trainers and then spread it across the state, it'll, it'll happen faster. Right. And we all know that that funny myth awareness is critical. <laughs> we need that. We need that out there. <laughs> Those foundational skills. And so... We talked about like just different locations, different collaboratives, and that's kind of the realm that we're going for professional development. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions on any of that before you do the survey? Just maybe just a comment. I yes. Just being able to have our teachers go and actually hear from Lucy has been super valuable. There's just something about hearing direct from the person who wrote it and it's just top notch and just you know all of our teachers kind of commented on that nice. and we went back through PLC meetings and that I don't know it might be too expensive but to have her still do the main training everyone gets to go to a few times and we've gone back through our PLC meetings like our last PLC meeting everyone brought the book like she talked about and outlined their book for that week just so it is a little more hands-on and sort of coaching in a way, you know. Yeah. What are you going to do this week with this book that Lucy taught us at the training at the yeah. camp? I love that that you're I, doing the follow-up. That's it's exactly awesome. what I was just going to say. It did work really pretty well. Yeah. And, the and online I still course, think it's vital to, that they get to hear from them. Yeah. Well, well, and that's what's kind of fun, too, is that, you, you know, you don't get a national presenter very often, especially because – you know, if, especially if you haven't been in the field at all and you just have a high school diploma, you just come right in like you probably haven't had any experience. So to have someone like that that has been spending their whole life, you know, studying is amazing. Um, so, yeah, so she run, and there's when you do the online course, she's in there and a lot of videos and stuff. But I do love that. And and that's what we're going to try. I think she'd be great possibly for my other two keynotes. I need to ask her. Um, yeah. So we'll keep her in mind, especially for like the state preschool workshop and, you know, I think that's a huge thing that we haven't had in the state is that like it's important and we have these like we're putting a lot of time and energy into it like these opportunities I know haven't been available to the field prior um so we're still just trying to figure out like what works but this this kind of training has been available K through 12 for a long time that they get it all the time so we're just trying to like kind of play catch up so yeah so if you just want to go out to that tiny url um it's slash pd 1101 11-01 for the date um, go in and complete that survey real quick. We'll give you a couple minutes. Um, and yeah, and I was just gonna say, I love the fact that you were able to take that kind of like as a director, right? And make sure you're following up as a PLC. And that's one of the reasons that we want maybe a director to be there as well as some of the teachers to make sure it's getting implemented yeah. on the ground level as well. And one more so. thing I'll say is just, uh, if you as a director want your teachers to participate, but you know, in order to like pay them for those Fridays or, um, not double up PD, like let us know like when you need to have this information so you can plan ahead. Again, like last year we know it was extremely rushed and a lot of you like responded and said, we're already, we already have things planned. I don't have any way that they can attend. Um, so just, you know, give us that information so that we can make this available to you. And just know like our, our desire is this year we'll do January through March or through May, but then the next school year we're trying to implement something come September. Yeah. So we're trying to stop playing catch up and be prepared way before. The ideal, so like our ideal way is to like they would start in September, so it's a brand new year. They could learn new material and implement it through that year due to our funding source. That's why the dates have been off and why we're trying to hurry and do one January through May to use funding that we have set aside for this year, so that the September one would correspond and would get us on track with our funding schedule. So that's why we kind of have had two off, but our main goal has been to have it start in September so that they could then follow through the year. So um, if you guys want to do that real fast. Well, the form tells me I need permission. Yes, Jamie. 
<laughs> We're glad to see you do that too, Jamie. Yeah. I get those emails back all the time. Yeah, man, I'd love to do that, but. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, then kind of the idea that I had for the 20, 2020, 2021 school year is to do more specific training on the standards that will be implemented. Mm -hmm. So there are seven different content areas. So take one per month that will dwell more into that, that content area. So mm -hmm. that's kind of, we, we've been having conversations based off of what we're hearing the field needs. And we want to make sure that we're doing the trainings that you guys want, not just that we're creating. So information on both of those on like what it entails, what type of training. Yeah, I can resend those again. Yeah, mm -hmm. we'll do that. I have no idea where I put that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the other thing, we can definitely send that to you. And the other, this year hasn't been set up yet. We can still do the same type of training that we've done this year. I don't have a problem running that cohort again. I think it's been very valuable. Um, I think the letters has also been very valuable. But I know that we didn't get the amount of people we wanted in attendance because of the time. And so that's why I would be more than willing to run those same cohorts again. And like Katie had talked about, she's already participated in the program, but she would bring different teachers this time. Like she's like, I would come again. Like I, I have no problem coming again and bringing my teachers again, but she would bring different teachers. And then in talking with, so Kathy Cole is our presenter and she's been all over. So she sees what other states are doing and she recommended like, if we can only have so many Fridays, then maybe we rotate the Fridays in those different regions, right? Mm -hmm. But then they'd only have to pay for maybe one day of training or maybe two days of training to have a sub come in. So that's why you have questions on how many substitutes would you need? And then we've also talked about the possibility of doing an AM session and a PM session to try to get more teachers there so that you could have like one sub all day, but then you could have two teachers like initially. Yeah. yeah. So just let you know, like we, that's how the survey came to be. Is just about the main teacher in the classroom or the teacher and all the aides that are in the classroom? Who did you train? So in Murray, our paras are our teachers, our classroom teachers, but the support of the special educators. So I took one teacher para from each class age group. Um, and so the next time I would do their teaching partner. And so in other districts have had, how are you? you want me to try so to the other districts have also brought in, their, they'll bring three or four teachers and then have had one director there or, or a coach, but then also Provo sent an SLP which was great to have her input yes. in this group too. And she would say, I'm coming from the SLP perspective, which was great. So it's kind of fun to get all those professionals. And then you have, there's great conversations that happen at those tables. Mm -hmm. Good sharing. You guys are doing some fabulous stuff. So I can't figure out where it is. I'll just switch it over. My drive, right? mm -hmm. I'm on your computer. Yeah, she's on my computer and my drive. She always has to do things. Okay. Um, Tamara just said, would the letters training be provided for all or just the ones with the grants? This is for all. Sorry about that. And then here, I'll send a tiny URL needs permission. Okay, we will work on that for a little bit. And then when you type it in, it'll come up in small letters underneath that or next to it that says you need permission. Yes. Okay, you drive it. So, I'll drive it. And if I can't drive it, then I'll go find somebody who can. I just feel like on the Google Sheet, it's always a tricky spot to figure out where that. The magic button is. Okay, I'm ready for you, Casey. Great. Okay, so I'll start this conversation. We'll come back and during the work time, we can do that survey as well. Um, so uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Early Ed U. Um, so it started at, in Washington, right? Yes, Washington yeah. State. Washington mm -hmm. State University. So they were trying to figure out a way to kind of open the door to early childhood professionals um, to enter college again. So it's a way that there's just a couple courses that are offered um, that they can then get college credit through. Um, through here, it's through SUU. They would get their um, credit. 
and then they can take those credits and go to a university. So um, this started a while back in our state, a couple years ago, and um, our intent was uh, they started out that it would be a way to, the, um, there were some people here, at U, uh, some teachers, sorry, that were interested in taking the courses. And so we started putting a, a little bit of money into the pot so with DWS and um, the Head Start collaboration. And so we all, you know, funded one professor, one instructor, and then um, we would allow these teachers to come in. So we've been doing that for a couple of years. Um, and the only, they were expecting that some of the teachers that were coming through that wanted like a K-3 endorsement on their license could then use these courses towards that license. So there was one course that actually, when it came to looking at it, that it could be used for that. And then through all the K-3 licenses over the last couple years, no one's ever utilized it for that. So we're kind of at a, a point for us right now where we're thinking, is that really where we want to put our money? Because um, And it's not really benefiting the preschool community. So we've been talking. And so this last, this last cohort for early ed, we didn't put any funds in. There were some um, teachers that are K through six that were interested in the courses and actually paid their own way. So it was a small fee. I think it was like $100 for them to pay. Um, and we still have people that participated that way. So kind of that doorway, it seems like the majority of teachers that are participating in it are using it for relicensure points, which is great and a great thing to have. Um, but as I was talking with Casey and the other group, um, my thought was right now in our state, in the LEA world, there's no reinforcement for a regular ed early childhood degree. You can't get a license with that. So I don't see the field putting, like taking these courses and entering college to get a degree that doesn't benefit them right now if they want to stay within the district. Now there's avenues for them to go into like um, in the quality rating system, correct? They would make a little bit more money or it would benefit them, but that's not our system. And then that would be encouraged them to leave our system. Um, so what I've been, been playing with is do we stop putting the money there and put it's, it wasn't a lot of money that we were putting, but um, putting our efforts more on providing more opportunities for the CDA. Because in my mind, I would rather have helping you guys meet the grant requirements of having the CDA in your classroom, as well as if we could spread the wealth of like every preschool teacher in the state having a CDA, like that would be a great starting point. I didn't want to make this decision though <clears throat> without talking to you guys, because I'm not a preschool director. I don't interact with the teachers as much as you do. So, um, what are your thoughts on this? If you have any questions about early ed, you, because I did a very brief summary. Casey's really the expert. That's why she's here, um, because my knowledge on it is very little. <laughs> and so I've been working on that. So do you have any questions? What are your thoughts? So how does early ed, you differ from um, some of Utah State's programs that are kind of like the online can get parents into the teaching realm versus like Salt Lake Community kind of has a pathway. Mm -hmm. Like, what are the differences in early ed you in comparison to some of those programs that are out there? My guess would be, and I don't because I don't want to speak for the other programs, but primarily the cost. Okay. So the way early ed you works is that it was developed through grant funding in partnership with a variety of universities across the country. So it came out of the, the um, University of Washington in Seattle, kind of that's been the home of it, um, but they have partnerships with people at like University of Virginia or other places, and what they did is they used this grant funding originally that was put aside for Head Start um, to start developing coursework because a lot of institutes of higher education just struggle to have the funding to develop coursework on early childhood. It's just they don't have a lot of students in their early childhood programs, therefore they don't have a lot of professors teaching in their early childhood programs programs, therefore there's limited time and resources. So the collaboration um, or the alliance, they call themselves the alliance, um, they got folks through this grant funding to, to create the course content. So they have content that's both in person, like you could just pick it up as a professor and it's like fully ready for you to teach an in-person early childhood class at an undergraduate level. Um, 
So actually some of our universities in the state do use that curriculum. Weber State does, and I think Utah State does as well for one or two of their courses. Um, and then they also created online curriculum. So same thing, it just kind of is like plug and play in a sense where you get the online version of the course. Uh, for us in Utah, we use Canvas and we um, have a partnership through the Utah Education Network, uh, which is, they're on the campus of the University of Utah, but they are not the University of Utah and they have state legislative funding. So that allows us then to plug into their Canvas without having to pay for Canvas ourselves. Um, so that keeps that cost really low. The curriculum's all developed by um, that higher education staff um, in the Alliance. And then we, what we do is we work with the Utah Education Network. They have that partnership for kind of professional development with SUU to be able to host college level classes through their online canvas and then get the credits transcripted at SUU. So that, what that does is that we just, the only cost we have is for the adjunct instructor that we pay for to teach the class. And then um, at the end of it, the students, all they pay for is the, the transcription fee except for we kind of moved to this like hybrid model. So I'm speaking from, I, I'm here from the Department of Workforce Services Office of Child Care. Um, sorry, I didn't know what, what heads up you guys got before I walked in the room. Um, I'm and, sure this used to you a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm here representing kind of the, the private child care side of the collaboration in Utah. So um, in, the, in some of the pilot courses that we run for this, we just paid out of Office of Child Care funding for the adjunct instructor. Uh, for the semester, and then we did not charge students to take the course. They just were charged that fifty dollars at the end for the transcript credits, and it's three credits. So that's probably the big difference: is that you're not doing like an enrollment at a university. You're not paying any kind of um, like student fee that goes along with the course. So usually, I think most of the classes that um, like it's like if you just try to because um, it's open enrollment. So if you at least went through the open enrollment process and then tried to take the class online, I think you're in for about 500 bucks. So that's a, a big difference there. So it's a great thing to know that it, it's around. Um, and I think, you know, in a couple of years when we're to a point where when we have a regular ed license, and they, it, it will um, be beneficial. I think like the door is still open for the hybrid model as like if you have teachers that are interested in it, they can pay their own way and it, it really still is very inexpensive. Yeah. We've determined just to, to charge $100 if a student were to pay for themselves. Um, and then if we have those interested students, we're happy to have them in the classes, even though they might be in with primarily um, Department of Workforce Services sponsored students who are in private childcare. We still think it's great for other people from Head Start or from the public school district to be there because then they get to learn from each other in the different environments that they're doing early education in. Mm -hmm. So we just did like that flat rate and whatever, however many students end up taking the class, the DWS will just pay for the, the remainder. Yeah. Mom, I think that from my perspective, the problem we have now is preschool teachers, once they get a college degree, leave preschool for an elementary or kindergarten job because the pay is so much greater. And I, I had one just last year that got teacher of the year for Carbon School District as her first year of being a teacher, but she had been my preschool teacher mm -hmm. for five years before she got her degree. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's nice that it's a feeding ground for quality teachers mm -hmm. for elementary school, but we lose our good teachers yeah. because they go where the money is. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just would like to be able to get more information about it so that I can let people know. We just don't have anyone. This is new to me, so I think it would be great if we could just have yeah. some more information so that we can pass that on have a better understanding that our people have some choices yeah and I think too it's a it's a great thing that um like if you had someone and they were really like maybe they had like no knowledge of child development and you felt like okay, this is a real need for this one person like I'm willing to as a district to put up the hundred dollars like it's a great way to have access to these um courses uh but as far as like are putting the funding in are you in agreement that there's not really that much of a need right now in the preschool space that feel about right? Okay. It seems to me that putting some um, weight behind getting more CD, more yeah. candidates for CD yeah. would fit the needs of our our space right now. Teacher population yeah. right now. 
and then I, again, if we get to the point that we have a regular preschool license and they can be paid what a licensed teacher is paid, this comes into play gigantically. Yeah. We've also yeah. found, I think early in you, it's great. And, and then you have to find the way yes, to fund then all the teachers. Right just the the entire state. state. Yeah. Yeah. 40, 80 plus teachers that we have. This yes. <laughs> just you guys. Just you. <laughs> yeah. Um, early at you, I think the content, we've had a lot of positive feedback about the content of the course, but we've also had feedback that it is college level coursework, right? Which is a, sometimes a step for some people. Um, so that's, I think, good to keep in mind is you might have people who are interested. You probably know their comfort level with that kind of level of academic rigor. It is has low barrier to the entry, right? You're not, you don't have the intimidation of like having to go through an enrollment process at an actual university or do any kind of additional paperwork necessarily. So that part's really nice since that can be a deterrent, but it is still college level um, curriculum. And then the classes, just for more information, so you're aware that we're teaching right now, um, we've limited the program to not really be a full degree program because ultimately you probably do need to get into a university um, to finish. Uh, so they can take up to nine credits. And right now the courses that we have are uh, positive behavioral support for young children kind of a guidance course. Um, we have language and literacy for preschool age children, which is perfect for you guys, because that would be your age group. We have to be clear on that for some of the, the um, private people who work more with infant toddlers. It doesn't work so well in that class. And then we have a child development and brain building class. So is registration right now, is it for all of them or is the one? The so the way that we've decided to do this, because we don't necessarily always know what applicants we're going to get, since in Utah we're running this as a collaboration where we want to have participants, or at least be open to participants from the public school sphere, from Head Start, and from um, the private child care. So what we've done is on the application form, there's a, a place to kind of rank the class that you would be most interested in, second interested in, third interested in, um, or if someone has already taken some of the other classes, they just put like not applicable, they can't take it again. And that helps us wait, you know, if we get um, like 60 applications in, right, that might be enough if people actually like went, went through and didn't end up dropping out before it started, because we always get a little bit of attrition, that would probably be enough for us to run all three classes. But if we didn't get enough interest, then we would just run whatever the top two most um, desired courses would be. So, so we're kind of letting the field dictate to us. Yeah. And then that way we don't have to disappoint people by potentially like canceling a class that they thought that they were signing up for. Yeah. You might have already said this. Is it for spring semester? So we're right now we're launching the application cycle for spring semester. Um, spring semester starts a, a little later, I think, than the universities do. But that's another nice thing about having this be done through a community agency like Utah Education Network is that we aren't beholden to a specific schedule. That also means that we can add in a couple extra weeks, um, which usually helps people. We have a, a week zero where technically the class has started, but they're just kind of trying to learn how to navigate Canvas, which helps with the success. And then we are able to build in a week uh, for like spring break for the spring semester or for um around Thanksgiving or fall time in the fall semester for people that get caught up. And there's an email currently in my draft box that has the application and some information that I was, I'm gonna send out right after this um, because you guys hadn't heard about it at all. <laughs> I wanted you to kind of know what it was. Um, and so just keep in mind that it's the hundred dollars. But again, if you have like one staff member that you're like, I would love, and then like maybe they get to the course and then they can do some PD for the rest of your staff. Like it's still a great tool. Um, if you have, yeah, maybe if you had someone who already is very competent, has their CDA, and you could see that they're ready for just that little push further, one course could, we've had a lot of positive feedback about them being very, the course is being written um, very, very clearly for people to be able to take what they've learned and implement it right back into the classroom. So it's, they're much less um, theory driven, and much more so like practice driven. And then I don't really, I don't totally know the audience with whom I'm speaking, so I should have asked that too, <laughs> Jessica. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Linda Chadburn also just wanted me to say that she didn't know that this existed. Okay. But she also likes, she thinks that we need to be putting our efforts more toward the CDA. Um, Am I talking to more people really, outside this room? Are. Really I didn't. I, I didn't say you have but she, <laughs> <laughs> Really, really wishes that we could work towards getting a state license for early childhood education. Sure. So you're talking to the majority of them are all LEA preschool directors. Okay. And are you guys on a grant?
program right now or no, no just generally this, this is for everybody. LEA preschool directors. So, well, this is a lot of them are on the grants, but a lot of them are not as well. Okay. Wonderful. So yeah. Do we have Washington County people? They're online. They're online. Yes, and then Tamara just asked where she gets where she obtains an application, but that will be the email coming right after this meeting. meeting. Yes, I just wanted and to on the email you have the courses, the three classes that you like, and on the yes, and it does and it has um, it has more detail about like a little course description in there as well. If you wanted to just learn more about Early Edu, the Alliance itself, they have a good web presence, so you can go to earlyedualliance.org, and that's their national web presence you'll see a lot more classes on there um so just as that caveat we picked just a handful to do in utah that we thought were kind of like the if you took all three you would have a really nice overview of the content you would need to be a successful preschool or early childhood teacher any other questions for casey before she leaves what's your last name Hutton, H-U-T-T-O-N. And my first name's confusing. It's just initial, so it's letter K, letter C. And she's great. And thanks for coming. Yeah, mm -hmm. no problem. She's yes, been with this project for a while. So. I feel like you like are going to say something before. I just check it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to stand up and walk yeah. away. Okay. okay. <laughs> Good. Good. Well, uh, I look forward to your conversations, too, about CDA things. Yeah. I'm sure that will continue. Yep. We'll okay. Sounds good. Well, if that was it, then you guys made my day because the Madeline was open because it's not Monday, <laughs> and so I got to stop there. You go. Perfect. Thanks for coming so much. Okay, so yeah, just a great thing to be aware of. Um, as far as CDAs go, um, again, we're going to be, we've gathered quite a bit of information. We just need to meet with our supervisors and have a good conversation on what we can do. Um, so hopefully in the coming weeks, maybe months, we'll have an avenue for um, that to be happening. Um, so we'll get back to you on that. Okay, the tiny URL should be fixed. Yeah. Apparently it was just unchecking a box. I told you it was going to be that easy. And I knew it was, I just couldn't try. find it. <laughs> oh, are you, is it a Google it's thing? It's a regular form. Oh my goodness. I can find on the and Google they auto easy thing, but the did they auto restrict it where it's like only people with a this ending yeah. of their email address? Ugh, oh, it's a pain. We deal with that too. Are we doing that? Doing it? Yes. Yeah. Is it the word out for fish yeah. the mouth and opportunity? Yep. Is that what it's called? So, yes. Actually, before you start that, leave it on your screens. Um, but I'm just going to go through these other things because we're just going to have some work time. So in the Google Drive as well, um, I have these three documents. So <clears throat> um, I kind of bugged you guys like crazy in August to figure out how many schools held a preschool. And I got your list. So the document in there that's the 81519 is my accurate list of every school building in the state that holds a preschool. So I want you to look at your program and verify <laughs> and verify that that's correct. Okay, so that's one of your tasks after that, after the Google survey that you're doing right now. Then the preschool director's Google sheet, you should have seen it in previous LEA meetings that we've had. Um, it's in there. Just make sure that that information is correct, that your phone number, your email, and then the program contact information. See, I'm still missing quite a few districts. So this is when I get a call from a parent that goes, I live in Jordan District. How do I contact? Who do I contact about their preschool services? I know who to call. So I have like their phone number there, a place for your phone number, and a place for your website. So if you'll finish this Google survey and then go in the Google folder and find these documents and verify them, um, that'd be awesome. I'll leave this one up so you can see where they are. Um, and then, oh man, he's emailing you directly. Okay, I'll look at his email and maybe I can say it. Yeah, so I'll give you a few minutes and then when you're done, just let me know. Same with online, let us know when you're ready to keep moving. Oh, we just tied. I hate to And if any of you that have phones want to use my computer, you're more than welcome to do that. If it's easier. I already have. Oh, you did the for your how many preschool classrooms do you serve in the district? Are you talking classrooms or sessions? 
Is this in the PD one? Yes. I actually said classrooms, but I probably will. I assume that you're running two sessions in each classroom. Okay. So okay. I've already assumed that. So, just want so classrooms work. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> I'm like, I assume. <laughs> but if you have any of those teachers that are only there half day, like, yeah. I um, should have put. That's okay. Not I should have put it in another category, good, but in general. overall. Yeah, we're all on.
So Jessica, you don't have us on the accurate list of LEA programs at all. No worry. I thought I had them. Mm -hmm. um, that's okay. You know. <laughs> I like you too. It's, it's fine. <laughs> it's, it's, it went Millard, Millard, Morgan, Morgan. No Murray. I would be knowing everybody. So how did I miss you? I mean. But you know, maybe I didn't respond to that one because I thought it was the other one. So it's not 100% you. We can always get me drunk in our house because my son is quite tall. Sometimes my husband is being quite tall. My husband was saying we should take him with us so I can go and see him in the car. And you can see this couple for him. He's like, if he wants to find it, he'll give you. And I looked at my son and I said, see you in the car. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I checked that I had every district because they gave me a list they pulled from like the system and then I went through and edited it and then I pulled up the one and checked the other one. That's why nobody contributed to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So will you like open like download the worksheet okay. and you can delete everything except for like the the headings and then just send me what you have because you're mostly just one building, right? Yeah, we're just one building. Okay, yeah. never mind. Just send me your building and the information that's. What else is on my subheading? In an email. Let me just double check what the headings are. Here's Murray. I'm just building the A, A is LEA, B is school. I name. should know what the yeah, I should know what the columns were for a second. D school level, D school type, and E classrooms. Which I can send you in an email, that's fine. I can out of here, just give me two seconds. Sure. Okay, what's the title of your sign? For Murray School District, we are the Early Childhood Education Center. Early Childhood Education Center. Pre K. Both. Ragged and sped. And then we have four. Four questions. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Gotcha. Sounds like you. Cash. Sounds like you. Program. Where's the program contest on here? Which one? That's cool. Yeah. No, anybody. Nobody's. Everyone's been less than thirty, so we're doing it. No response. Okay. Good. Or no.
Of you are still working. Um, good? Okay, let's move on. Well, I have to tell you the results of the year surveys already. <laughs> okay. I'm so excited. So, top one is language literacy, followed by it's a tie for embedding instruction through planning, development, and appropriate practice. So, those seem to be the three hot topics. And then, pretty awesome that 53% said that they could do either A or B for either all day or half day. And that 26% said that they could do only half day training. So it looks like we might do a half day training because that's about 70, that's more than 70%. So we might break it up into an AM session and a PM session. The only thing that worries me about that is that sometimes you guys run your hours differently, right? So please take that into consideration when we plan our trainings. I will do my best. So for those of you that run your AM, it might be nice for me to know when you run your AM and PM sessions and not have to like, check all of your websites. So if any of you would like to email me and let me know the hours of your AM and PM sessions, when we're coordinating with facilitators of the training, I will work as closely as I can for what works best for all programs. Yeah. Okay. I might send out a Google sheet for that too. Right. So, so we can get it all. And it looks like most of you are able to attend with your teacher. So that's fabulous. Nice job. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now I can proceed. <laughs> yes. Okay. So future LEA meetings. So again, we only had two of these prior. They're both like before and after legislative session. And then I disappeared and I apologize for that. Um, trying to get grant applications. That was a beast. My entire, it was not fun. Um, it should be a lot smoother this year since legislation is not changing. Um, so I'm kind of deciding how often I'd like to um, kind of schedule them out right now. So pre, uh Teresa has her round table every month, right? Is it every month? Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like I have that much to share. Um, so I'm kind of thinking of scheduling every other, or I could just like put it out there and schedule them every and then cancel them if I don't need them type of thing. Um, part of the thing that plays into this situation is the district share outs that I want to start doing. Um, so I'll talk about that real quick and then we can figure out what we want to do. So um, I mentioned that we go to SCAS three times a year, which is the conference that um, we meet with other state preschool specialists, which is really awesome. Um, they've given us this template that we're doing like a state share out where we come in and it's just like four or five slides where we talk about um, what we've been doing um, and what we're working on. And it's been really helpful to like get feedback from them. And I thought that'd be, that would be so awesome for you guys to do, to come in and say like what you're excited about, what you're working on, so that you guys can be more familiar with what's going on in the other districts. So this is the template. So you would just have like your name and then whoever is um, here doing the um, presentation and your title. So the first slide is like celebrating progress and accomplishments. Um, what have you accomplished recently and what are your next steps? You can just list things there. The next one would be like, what are you excited about this year? What projects are you working on? The next would be a give help and get help. So what can you help people with? What have you accomplished? But also like, what are you working on? And what could, do you need help on? Um, and then just a topical question of one topic you're hoping to learn from from your college. So something maybe that you're starting to work on or just have questions about. Um, so that would be the template. Um, so it's kind of like how often you want to receive those. I'm thinking we probably don't want to do like a bajillion of them all at once because that'll be a lot. I, it should only be about 10 minutes. Um, 
But if you want to be receiving those frequently, I could just like tag on to Teresa's too. So we could just do like an extra half hour where we do the district share outs for right now. Um, maybe I'll start with that, tag on to hers. And then um, if I need to extend it, then we can. Does that sound like a good plan? I'm just thinking, because then we can get the share outs being done. Um, and then after we kind of get through the share outs, then I might uh, move to like an every other schedule. And then we'll see where that goes. Anyone have any other thoughts on that? <clears throat> Maybe they just needed to talk it out. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much a conversation. Huh? I know, right? So I believe I put the district share out thing in the, um, in the Google folder. So you can start working on that when you're ready to go. Let me know. Um, once I get some dates, I'll probably start reaching out and asking. It would be nice if you can be here um, when you're talking about it in person. Um, I do know we have some that are, you know, traveling and or might need to do it remotely, which we can also do because we can um, hear them over the mic. But again, I think it's, it's best if you can be here in person. Um, so once I get the dates figured out with Teresa, I'll send that out and then I'll start having people sign up. Is there anything else that you guys kind of with that give help, get help? Is there anything right now that you guys want or need to talk about? Any other questions for us? I just had just a general and I might have missed something, but those of you who are doing the grant, I thought there was going to be some kind of a template or something for the portfolio. So I missed that. No, so it's coming. So I am, um, it's really close actually. So I, I worked on creating two different ones, having a class and a program. Um, and so once that's done, it'll come out. So um, I wouldn't, the class one, it, it, the list looks a little long, but when you read through the things, it's things that the teachers should have. So I really would encourage you to like, I don't think it's a bad idea to have your teachers just have that done regardless. Cause, um, and then we'll kind of, cause we'll come and do, um, probably just pull a sample. So we're gonna go with procedures, pick a couple of teachers and ask for their portfolios. So it shouldn't be too much of a heavy lift for those teachers. Again, it should be things they can just pretty quickly gather into a binder type of thing. And then we'll have a program portfolio and that will have some things that aren't in the, in the classroom one. Um, so that should be coming out soon. I just need, well, we meet with Emma from DWS like twice a month. And so, um, we've gone back and forth on the template and like the items. And so once she agrees and we're all in agreement, then we'll send it out. Awesome. So you want an actual hard copy? Of it can be either actually. Be either. Yeah. So if they want to do electronic, it doesn't have to be a binder. So it can be electronically if they want. And then, um, cause that's probably a lot of times easier. Um, and a lot of their stuff is already electronic. So either, or I don't care, but we just need to be able to access it. Um, I will be sending out in the coming days um, an email, especially for the expanded student access people. We're starting to do observations. Um, we're working on the observation tool um, analysis on like moving to class and doing echoes. We got talking yesterday and I, um, the board still needs to make a decision, but I anticipate we'll probably stick with ECRIS for the year just because we won't have enough data or time after they make a decision. Even if they made a decision in March, they're like, we'll do a higher percentage of ALA classrooms. I don't have the time with the application process to go out and magically do all those extra observations. So I'm anticipating that we're going to stick with ECRIS, but we'll be coming into classrooms. Um, we're going into some like next week. <laughs> um, so I'll be sending you an email, uh, with like a heads up, um, but we'll come in and we'll be doing both. I'll be doing the class and she'll be doing the Eckers um, or someone with doing the Eckers. You'll only be, right now the Eckers is the only thing that's going to be counting. Um, so just keep that in mind. We've noticed and I felt bad we went to a couple of private programs and becoming quality programs um, that when we walk in that first page of the Eckers checklist has some questions from, you know, that we need to know about the classroom we're observing. And I felt really bad because there was this teacher and she was anticipating having this 30 minutes of prep time. And instead she was helping us get this information. And then we're scoring her on a classroom that she missed 30 minutes of prep time, which I don't like. So I'm going to send out a list that has all those Eckers things on it. Um, as well as a couple other things that we kind of need for that class Eckers analysis. It's not going to be a lot of things. And I would just encourage you to send that out to all your teachers and have them have that ready for the sessions, not for each class, for each session. So that when we come, they can just hand us the paper and continue prepping. Cause I really don't, those things need to be up to date and we can always check at the end of the day and like, are, have any of these things changed? Is it really current? But I just think that's such a better thing. And then your teacher's prepared to like, yeah, 
it's just nicer for the teacher, you know, like, okay, I, I was prepped for this. Here's my papers. Like we're not asking these questions and they have their prep time for the day. So watch for that um, and notify your teachers that as of like next week, possibly that they could be having some observations. Um, and your, what's your window of heads up? There's not a heads up. That's been, something, that's, the, that's been something with, so I was giving a heads up previously. I'd be like, we're coming this week type of thing. Um, but as we've been collaborating with WS and stuff, she, uh, they, that's not their policy and that's not their, how they, how they function. And honestly, I should be able to hear a high quality program. I should be able to walk into any room at any moment True. and have it be high quality. True. And so um, teachers just need to be on their game <laughs> and ready and, and, and prep. Um, so, yeah, so next week we're just picking randomly. Um, anything else with that? Yeah. So, yeah, because you're becoming quality. So, <laughs> the expanded student access. To <laughs> so, I'm starting the expanded student access next week. So, yes. saying, so, will you send us these? Because some of this information will be in our district database that so we'll need to actually get. Yeah, I'm going to send that to, I'll send it, like, I'll work with Jimmy today. Hopefully, have it out today, if not Monday. But you can look at the Eckers checklist. I'll send that for sure because that's the majority. That's really what takes the majority of the time. Um, and if I don't get the other part out, we'll we'll work with you after because we've already done four observations where we need that additional information and we didn't have that yet. So we'll, we'll be contacting them and getting that. So Gina will be coming back. Yeah, just for that sheet. <laughs> <laughs> just through email, most likely. Um, but yeah, so just tell you just you know that that's happening and that it's honestly because and I I hate that it's that quick of a turnaround, but it is. Um, but it really shouldn't take them too long. They should have that enrollment records and stuff that they can pull up and get the majority of that information. Um, but I'll feel less bad if they've been prepped and had time to get it. If then we have to take time from them to get it at the beginning. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks for your patience with us. Like, I can't say that enough. Emails get buried really quickly. I've learned with this job, I'm trying, I'm, I'm a very organized person. When I was teaching, I was organized. When I was in school, I was organized here. I've yet to accomplish that. I think it's due to staff turnover and um, just some other crazy things. I think we honestly need a couple more people for preschool. Um, but again, we don't have the data yet to justify that. So a lot of times I come in and I put out the fire of the day. So if you email me and or Jamie and you feel like we haven't responded, just send us another email, give us a call. Um, and we'll get back to you. Things get buried, and I, I sincerely apologize for that. We keep trying to be better. Um, just know that we do care about you. We want to help. We're just running around with our heads cut off. <laughs> and it doesn't hurt to resend that email yes. because we, we've we learned to start at the top. If you start at the bottom, sometimes the answer has already been given, so then you're just playing this catch-up game, right? So we start at the top, so please don't feel bad about yeah. We, it it us, won't fine. bother either one of us that you've sent us the same email three times. Yep. <laughs> and Lola has some questions for you specifically about changing your Shane's form. So I told her before she logs off of here. Oh, do you have stuff? Where are you only on? I'm yeah. Oh, so she can just, Lola, if you want to just download that, is that the 815 one probably? The, yeah, the schools. So that one's just an Excel sheet. So if she just wants to download it and change it and then email it back to me. That works. Okay. Is Teresa's maybe in the same room? Yes. Okay. yes. Can you leave your stuff here? Yep. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, it's at one. So I gave you the lunch hour. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. We're trying to, yeah. to leave our stuff. Bottom up. Um, I'm not going to stay here. So, but you should be fairly safe, but there's not going to be anybody monitoring it. Not a guarantee, but we will check the door. Yeah. It should be fine. And typically we walk away and leave stuff. Okay, thank you guys so much. And then I will post the recording to this, the link to it in that Google Drive. I would just bookmark that Google Drive. We're going to try to use it more frequently and have all that stuff in there. Thanks for all you do. Thank you.